What is up, guys? Shay from Microdex Mushrooms here. With some reishi, we're going to learn how to grow reishi today. Yeah, the steps are pretty simple up until fruiting conditions, which is where it gets kind of tricky. Reishi take a long time to fruit. Uh, like these took about two months. So you got to really let them sit in their environment and chill for a while. But uh, what you get out of it is a really medicinal potent mushroom that is really good for overall health. Thanks for stopping by. Let's get into it. So for this video, we'll be using some examples of what we've been cultivating over in the plant cell technology lab. Also, what I've been cultivating at home. It's like these nice little structures that the reishi naturally form when you put them in the right condition. We'll be using these as examples of the stages that you'll see as you try to grow out your own. So most of our reishi samples are wild. So if you go the wild route, make sure that your culture is very clean on agar before you proceed into uh, like grain or anything. It'll just make your grows consistent and clean and you won't have to have the reishi mycelium fighting contamination while it's trying to colonize. Uh, once it looks nice and clean, we have a few examples here. Once your agar is fully colonized, just like with any species, you can take it to liquid culture and that will allow you to get more yield because you only need two cc's to inoculate. That will take more time. So if you do want to just run some tests to make sure it's clean and take it to grain, you can just cut a wedge out of your agar and introduce that to the grain and make sure only the mycelium of the reishi is growing through there. I'm just going to drop a real quick agar recipe. Three grams of potato starch, two grams of agar, and one gram of honey and 0.5 cups of water. Multiply that by 10, that's a good batch. Sterilize that in a mason jar for 30 to 45 minutes, and then pour your plates. Make sure that the plates that you pour on or the containers that you pour in are also sterile. Speaking of autoclavable containers, we have some really good PP5 containers on the Plant Cell Technology website. You can check that out down in the description and use code microdex to save 10 percent on that i actually did most of my experiments in these cups and they work really good you can even do pre-pour agar you mix your agar ahead of time and pour it into the containers and as long as there's like a good gas exchange hole in there with some micropore tape you can just do all your agar work in there you can do you can add your grain into there once you know that it's clean let it colonize up and then just top it off with some substrate, which I actually did with the reishi. I'm still doing some other projects out of these cups, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it's super compact. I heard a lot of people say that they didn't have the space for mycology, so I tried to shrink it all down into the smallest little container. So definitely grab some of those. Microdex, 10%. Save yourself a little money. Get your experiments going and of course we have agar as well which is that's like half the stuff that you need already uh, you can get honey at a local store and then you'll be ready to go pretty much just need some water all right but back to the reishi so once your culture is super clean you're going to get this nice like epidermis type skin on top of your reishi and they're pretty much just locking in all that nutrient that they've collected they're keeping it nice and solid they're kind of they're creating a skin across all of it so they can protect it and be able to use it to grow the fruiting body now the fruiting body will happen um it can happen on agar if you leave it for long enough like you can see uh metabolites will start building up and those metabolites they're uh they're secondary metabolites from them breaking down the nutrient itself now, if you don't want to fruit on agar, and you could totally do that, and it's super cheap to just grow things out on agar and watch them do what they want to do without the excessive nutrient of, say, like wood, 
uh, if you wanted to move on to the next step, you would introduce your mycelium to green. And of course, you want to sterilize that grain. Make sure you hydrate it overnight. Just take your grain, typically a bird seed or millet, soak it in water overnight, and then strain it very well. Make sure there's no excess water. Sterilize that for two hours. If it's at room temperature, then an hour and a half. Make sure you don't fill your jars over halfway as well because you need some gas exchange in there. Just to make sure they don't overcook on themselves, you want the jars to be able to breathe a little bit. And then you're going to introduce your mycelium to the sterile grain in any other way that you would do sterile work. Make sure your environment is clean. Drop your, drop your grain into the cup or take a wedge of your mycelium or your liquid culture of the mycelium and introduce that to the grain. You would introduce your mycelium to grain. Either way works. And then you're just going to let your mycelium colonize that. It should take uh, five to ten days. Reishi are very aggressive colonizers. They're super fast. They're almost, they're about as fast, if not faster, depending on the subspecies. Um, they're as fast as Pleurotus, also known as oyster mushrooms. Oysters, they tend to just take out substrate in days uh, they move really quick you can see them growing like almost in real time if you really watch them you can see the hairs of their mycelium just crawling across the substrate once you reach 100 percent colonization on your grain you can move it on to substrate i like to mess around with my ratios depending on what i'm going for but honestly as long as there's more substrate then grain you're good to go you can play around with with whatever ratio you want um the bigger the block the bigger the fruit but the bigger chance of contamination so you just have to be careful don't bite off more than you can chew in the beginning just so you don't waste money on substrate do a lot of smaller projects instead so when it comes to reishi the fruiting period is actually very long because they they begin to fruit just as fast as any other mushroom around two weeks after colonization they're about ready to start going and beginning their growth cycle but what they do is they kind of they blob and they start out as like a puddle of mycelium that's hardening almost like can like reverse candle wax and imagine like a candle melting but in reverse so but also the the wax or the mycelium is actually coming from the surface of the fruiting body itself so it's just slowly growing on top of itself and it will also grow towards light. So if you put a light anywhere near your reishi, they will all grow directly towards the light. I've done a, a few experiments where I've uh, grown out like big conks where I would take a block, I would take a block like this and I would only cut here and then I would take a UV light and line it up right with it but space it apart and you could see the mushroom would come out like a blade straight into the light it's really cool to see and you can do all types of experiments with it the other thing to watch out for when growing reishi is the secondary metabolites that it puts off can cause contamination because it's so high in nutrients um so i suggest not leaving or trying to grow them in open air uh if they get wet they can rot very easily um the more mature parts they can sustain getting soaked but if it stays wet too long it'll cause wet rot and you'll just lose all of it 
definitely want to avoid that because it takes a long time for the fruiting body to grow in the first place. And uh, one of the last things I'll say about the fruiting period to watch out for is reishi and other fungi put out a lot of CO2. And typically they are trying to outrun their CO2. So as you grow your reishi mushroom, you should imagine that there's CO2 wafting away from it at all times. And typically when it's rising off the block, the reason it didn't just like the reason it didn't just conk out on the block itself is because there's too much CO2 coming from the block because it's alive. So it will go up and then it'll conk out up here where the air is fresh. Now you can kind of simulate that same thing by keeping them in the bag and then they will kind of run away from the block, which is how you get these cool formations where you can see maybe when it was in the bag, there was like a buildup of moisture in this in this pocket, in this pocket, and it was perfect. So it started here. And once it starts, once it commits, it just keeps going. And because it's trying to escape the CO2 from the block, it'll just go up, 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 and up to the top of the bag, which was covering it just barely, just to give it that little oomph to want to go forward. And you can see this one over here. is the same same idea this one's a little more even and you can just break these off and use them in tea and some people say it's pretty bitter if it's if it's bitter maybe put a little you might have put a little too much in i think it has a really good flavor and it really helps with inflammation and a lot of other things. There's tons of research out there. You guys can look that stuff up. I'm mainly just trying to focus on the how to grow it. Um, but it's definitely worth checking out if you have any autoimmune issues. I personally uh, used reishi to treat some of my autoimmune issues that popped up in the past. And I feel great now. Um, it's one of the main reasons I started cultivating these in the first place is because I heard of the I heard of the benefits after I got interested in how cool it was to grow these, but yeah. Reishi. Reishi are awesome. They're really cool projects to kind of set and forget as long as you just uh, set them properly. In the right environment make sure that your bag is nice and like sweaty on the inside and humid and not in direct sunlight and they'll just they'll just do their thing they'll grow and then they'll give you lots of tea to use in the future boost your immune system awesome mushrooms Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Hope you guys enjoyed all the examples. Um, if you guys want to see these more in real time, we're always posting on Microdex Mushrooms and Plant Cell Tech on Instagram. Come check us out if you aren't on there already. Uh, daily lab check-ins pretty much. Checking out all the grows. You'll see all these and more hope to see you guys there drop some comments let me know what you guys want to see if there are any species that you want covered talk to you guys later hey microdex here if you guys want to support the channel and save some money on some plant and fungi supplies go and check out the plant cell technology store and use the code microdex to save 10 percent